We're still on the breakfast and Plus TV Africa. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. And Opunabo Nkataria joins us this morning for Off the Press. Opunabo, it's good to have you join us. Good morning. Good morning, Messi. But uh, nobody has seen us. Uh, okay, I'm sure that, you know, our team of engineers are working on uh, resolving all of that uh, in no time. All of that would be taken care of. Thank you so much for your feedback. But let's delve into the thank conversation. You. Starting off with the Daily Trust newspaper, ripples over Obi's religious war phone conversation with Oyodepo. Uh, that's one major conversation or one major topic that has been, you know, dominating the social media space, especially on Twitter. It hasn't been uh, quite easy. Then underneath you find leaked audio authentic. That's what the Labour Party is quoted to say, uh, leak audio authentic, Labour Party, it's fake, says Obidati Media Office. I mean, there seemed to be a discrepancy, uh, you know, with the statement. I never campaigned for politicians, leaving faith Bishop Oyodepo, is quoted to say, presidential, Obi's presidential ambition dead, Tunubu's camp is quoted to say, uh, what could be the reason for this statement? We're studying the situation. Khan and other bodies are saying, weaponizing religion, very dangerous. Uh, Khalid Namani, uh, Professor Kari, this is a person who are quoted to see all of this on any other caption. Now, over 80,000 Nigerians require heart surgeries every year. That's according to experts. That's unfortunate. Bandits kill seven farmers, abduct 26 in Niger, and pick two students at Varsity Ho Hostel in Zamfara. And uh, you find the FCTA sends 217 beggars back to Katsina and Kanu Kebi State, among others. Then, just before move away, the four are over Kanu governor elects public adversaries. Uh, 133 billion are hangers to give away for MM. I a a prone expansion. Post election violence, police arrest 17 more suspects in Zamfara. There's a lot going on as the federal government deploys 12 billion naira fire trucks to Lagos, Kanu, Abuja, and uh, yes, Abuja airports. Now that's also commendable if you ask me. The Guardian not reporting some story differently from what you have on the Daily Trust now. The Guardian says, Obi's leaked phone call with Oyodepo raises the dust and uh, audio, leaked audio on Obi, Oyodepo, deep fake. That's what, you know, the Labour campaign is saying. Okowa, audio taken out of context and Obi's spokesman blames NCC for leaked call. You know, because uh, for every call that we have, there's usually this thing, even on on WhatsApp, where you say, hey, the conversation is encrypted back to back. I mean, at what point do you have, you know, that call being, you know, leaked and what have you? So uh, we continue, right? I have never campaigned for any politician, says Oyodipo. Namani or be introduced religion, ethnic politics, so quite. Uh, that's what's making the rounds now. 28 women die daily for uh, severe cur cancer in Nigeria. Investors gained 2.54 trillion naira in first quarter's market names political risks. How underfunding abuse uh, and Mara master plan in universities and polytechnics. Now we'll just move away from that. There's also a picture of the Pope where he celebrates Palm Sunday and mass after hospital stay and defends the abandoned. Uh, that's a lot. Then we move away from that. The punch is also with us, but the punch is reporting differently from the two papers we have taken. The punch says, end of tenure, Buhari Obasanjo, or Sibajo, I beg your pardon, 28 governors, ministers to begin asset declaration, just as it was expected that you declare your asset when you come on board and declare after you're leaving. Outgoing public office holders, Uh, outgoing public office holders must declare assets by May 29. That's according to CCB officials. President-elect Tunubu Shatima, 28 incoming uh, governors get CCB forms this month. So uh, what you have, what you had and what you are going to have at the end of the tenure is very important. Now, Chinese loan uh, increases by 209% under Buhari. 
Then federal government demolished Lagos Airport's jet hangars April the 15th. Uh, that's another time, you know, to recon with. Ramadan, why the aged may, be, may abstain from fasting. Uh, I think it's important to pay attention to that. 22-year-old Ogun lady found dead in room. Boyfriend held. Uh, that's also another sad story. And tanker fire worsens as Lagos Ibadan Expressway had or uh, experienced a gridlock. And just quickly, we'll just uh, uh, take a look at this one. It is the leadership newspaper. I'm not sure we have that then. We'll just uh, quickly just stay with the nation there. The nation newspaper talks about governors and FIU on coalition cause of a cash withdrawal. Uh, that's talking about, you know, governance and local government at the end of the day. Then why PDP's neck BOT governors can't save IU. Investors made 1.6 trillion naira gains in the first quarter. That's it this morning on uh, the Nation newspaper. We'll just quickly turn our attention now to our guests. Uh, Nkutaria, can you hear me? Right. Open the bar, Nkutaria, can you hear? Okay, yes, please. Now, it's good to have you in vision now. So, qu quickly, what, what do you make of this? I'm sure that you've probably had that conversation that was leaked, uh, the conversation between Peter Obi and, of course, uh, uh, Oyedepo, some quarters are saying that that's fake and others are saying, you know, it's true. What are your thoughts? Uh, Messi, uh, first, good morning, Nigerians. I will not sit down here to ascertain the truth or veracity or appropriateness of that state. However, the principal parties involved, I'm talking of uh, OB and that you have come up, including. Uh, have come up to deny it. They said no such conversation took place. Nevertheless, it is um, incumbent on the SSS or DSS, which right now is seen to be partisan, but it's incumbent on the uh, SSS to investigate and come up with a report. And the report should be in such a way that will convince Nigerians whether they had such a conversation or not. That is left for the DSS. But we hope that whichever means they use in arriving at that decision will be transparent so that Nigeria, because a lot of people believe that Obi is just being hunted. And the matter of fact that after the declaration of result, the last controversial election, the most controversial presidential election, and the uh, Obis resolve to approach the court that the best way is to hunt him in order to intimidate that is the general perception. And if you also observe what happened to a passenger and obedient, how he was whisked away from, uh, from the plane. So a lot of people don't have the view the, 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 the uh, veracity of that report that it is leaked. And more so, when the DSS or when they investigate, it should be against the background. I hope it's not investigating the detailed version of the discussion. I can take, for example, now, Mercy. I can say, somebody can say, ah, I found Mercy in a hotel with about four different men. Mercy is a compromised person. I don't want to use the word. I believe you know what I'm talking about. Mercy is a compromised person because I saw with four different men in the hotel. Then I now come up to say, ah, that girl, then she is this. If she did it, then she is this. Now if I get detailed to say, she is this. Meanwhile, they have explained that if she did it, which comes with a doubt. So, so many things can happen in this age. So they have to let Nigerians know. And that's why they, I say they have to be as transparent as possible. They have to, that's one aspect of it. Then number two, you see, uh, in the administration of justice, you don't check charity. We have a serving deputy governor in the north who, in the mosque, said, even a, a worse thing, when he told the Muslims that, look, this, if uh, they allow Obi to win, then they, they have all that part of those that fought for the defeat of Islam. 
that it was a religious war. A serving deputy governor. Now you're going to say he has immunity. I hope he'll be prosecuted. Don't also forget what M. C. Oluma and Co. said in Lagos during the election. At least in the case of Olumo, in the case of uh, 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 the president elect's wife, Bola Metinibu's wife, who said, you cannot, Debo's cannot come to Lagos, make money, and vote for a different country. That is also incendiary. That is also a contribution of the uh, con uh, contravention of the uh, provisions of the uh, Constitution. Why should she not be arrested? She doesn't have a meaning. So you don't select in the administration of justice. You don't try to pick. And that is our worry. Why we are not going to sit down here? They have come up with a rebuttal. No, we never said that. So why we are not going to sit down here to prejudge and also encourage the security authorities to carry out proper investigation and come up with a report? These other persons should also be arrested because there is nobody above the law. The only man who can be insulated from now is the deputy governor because of his uh, immunity. After that, once he's out of office, we expect the SSA to also investigate. The likes of Festus Kayama and Co. has also made very serious statements that have threatened the negations of this country. Why? They invited the Faneke, they apologized and they allowed him to go. I also hope that when Peter Obi will apologize, if he did say that, when he, when he will apologize, he will also be allowed to go. Because they, all they told Panika Obi was to apologize. And he was said to, and he was cautioned never to make such statements again. Obi too, if at all it is true, should also be made to apologize, cautioned, and set free. That's, that's my take on that. Well, let's turn our attention to another one that's very interesting. The fact that at the end of tenure, uh, President Mohammed Buhari, uh, the Vice President, 28 governors and ministers, are uh, expected to begin asset declaration while you have those who are going to be taking over also picking up the form for declaration. I mean, do you think that all of this, this entire procedure and, uh, you know, process has helped in the fight against corruption and illicit uh, all you want to say, who not necessarily listed, but you know, uh, amassing wealth indiscriminately. You see, this is now. You are correct. Why do you have to be Can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes. You see, this is so. Why do you have to be brother? Uh -huh. You said this is your son. Sorry for what? You said the truth. So the fact remains that the whole essence is to ensure probity. In government, that's the whole test. But how efficacious? And it has nothing to do with the laws. Well, the laws are there. It has to do with the implementation of this law. Where you have persons, you know, you fill a form, have your property, everything, all you have, so that by the time you leave office, you fill a day. And if there are additions, then you explain how you came about those additions. You can say, well, because as a government official, you are not expected to uh, get yourself involved in contracts, kickbacks, and so on. So how did you get this addition? That is the whole essence. In other words, if, for example, now, I had 10 houses, and by the time I'm leaving office, I now the houses have been used to drink, I have to explain how I got the remaining 10 houses. Nobody's really bothered about if it reduces. Because if it reduces, it's a plus to the government. You can say, I sold it. No, that we are not against any law. But if it increases, because you're not expected to be involved in any other activity other than the government activity. And that's where a lot of force are critical of Fetu Kayamo. Now I will go to court in my capacity. In what capacity? You're working for the government. You talk of your capacity when you leave the office. Now, having said that, the efficacy is what we are looking, talking about. In Nigeria, it is not efficacious. In Nigeria, they don't even bother about well, your um, the form you fill. It is only when the government in power is after you, maybe you've fallen out of favor or something. That is when they come after you. And in most times, in most cases, you'll find out that it is the man that has fallen out of favor. And what the government wants to do is to bring him to shame, to punish him for being on the other side, to punish him for being 
advance to their policies or decisions or whatever. So, how many people in government? I can tell you, even a governor, if you want to look at that, even a governor cannot afford the kind of monies they spend or they waste. Because the monies do not belong to them. The monies belong to the states. And that's where a lot of people are calling for even the pro of the so-called, uh, uh, what's that thing called again? Security funds. Because that is also another conduit. The security fund in Jigawa might be different from Rivers, might be different from Lagos, might be different from this. And most governors, that is what they use. And these monies are taxpayers' money. So that's why I say also probe the security fund. But the excuse there is, I cannot tell you I gave one money, uh, X amount to social person. I cannot disclose the identity of the person because that might be jeopardizing the life of that person. Ordinarily, it shouldn't be because the SSS should be protected because you disclose to certain authorities, not to the world, so to speak, in terms of security forms. That's what I'm talking about. But the, the SSS, you cannot also trust them. You cannot trust the police. So when I go and say, I gave money to Joseph, who, who actually snitched on, spilled on Mr. Davy. The SSS man might be Joseph's cousin or Davy's cousin. And my dad said, This is the person you that's why I believe they said no when it comes to security funds. No. But there should also be a ceiling of security funds. The constitution should say look, no, not more than 100 million, 200 million, or 300 million. If you want more, apply to the State House of Assembly. It shouldn't be a blanket thing. Now, back to the other ones. It doesn't work. I can tell you that there are so many top government officials. These days, in fact, you even have cashiers who have estates. Cashiers, clerks who have estates. Because they are working in connivance with the PAMSEC or the commissioner. You have PAMSEC who went in as PAMSEC living in rented houses and today they have estates. You don't need to wait till the end of the tenure of that PAMSEC. Because most times these properties are going to be gotten using studio names or names of other persons. So you don't really need, you should start investigating. From day one, and whenever you find such a person wanting, even before he leaves office, unless he has immunity, should be arrested and prosecuted. That will serve as a deterrent because it will be difficult to see anybody in government stealing and will buy put those properties in his own name. He put them in either a friend's name, and that's why I find that most times when they are out of office, they run into problems with most of their friends. Because those friends who say, no, I will not reduce the property to you. You cannot go to court to report. Because the, the judge will ask you, how did you get that property? So it leads to killing. It leads to all kinds of things. Like, I don't want to mention this, but I'm quite aware of at least six, seven. Six, seven. Governors inclusive. Commissioners inclusive. Pamsets, clerks, and so on. Those that are most times exempted are like the special advisors because most times they are not given sensitive positions. But some of them have been indicted. But you find that are ministers, you find that are pants checks, you find that are clerks, cashiers, and so on. Most of them are involved in those fraudulent deals. So in Okunaba, so what the, the yes. Are you are you saying that this is just yes. a meaningless gesture at the end of the day in our democracy? It, it is ideated for intensely good reasons. But it's meaningless like I now. Said, the implementation. The implementation has made it almost redundant. So it has to do with the institutions. Because you have corruption, even in America, even Donald Trump has done that, you have corruption. But you see, you have another client, you have state structure fighting the corruption and not individual. And it is not selective. That's the point. It is, look, you remember the Watergate scandal? Definitely, you're not born there. But the word of God. Don't think I'm saying uh, that was in 70, 71 or thereabouts. So you remember the water gets and next look at Donald Trump, who has just been indicted recently. So these are the issues I'm talking about. The states. Now, when you talk of the state, you're talking of the structure. The state should be empowered, but in Nigeria, the state is not empowered, so it is selective. It is used for witch hunting. Look at the former CJN. Just because he refused to do the bidding of the present government. Look at what happened to him. So it rivers to it, I say rivers to it. in Nigeria, it is weaponized, it is used for witch hunting. That's the point we are having, that's the point we are making. It is not, it is ideal, like I said, for attempting to, to point the system of all kinds of fraudulent activity. 
But is it so? No. Even the, like the electoral act, the business and so on. Look at how it was manipulated. So that's the problem we have in this country. Otherwise, we have the sound laws. In fact, I believe Nigeria is one of the countries with so much laws that are that you need not actually uh, 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 compress. You did, you did not have them in a particular book or in books. But it's not the case. In other countries, even a norm, there are norms that people respect and obey. There are values, ethos of society that people respect and obey. Here we have all kinds of including the law on how to breathe, the law on how to sleep, the law on how to talk. We have that. But it is implementation. And that's why people are calling for ensuring that these structures and not the individuals are made strong. Because if you talk about an individual, when in this office, everything collapses. When you talk about a structure, it's for life. That's the point. Otherwise, it's a brilliant, it was a brilliant idea, but then we are talking about implementation. Well, um, I mean, still looking at uh, the punch news. Even the CCT, CCT chairman, you can imagine, such a man that is supposed to be out of office still in office. That the Code of Conduct Tribunal chairman. He was invited by the National Assembly. He refused to go. He went the, after being threatened. He went once, and the next thing was in court. But we saw all, basically, what happened, what he did. And you expect such a man to pretend over. But it's not possible. You cannot be people to do that. And Mr. President is seated there. Mr. President is seated there. Silent. So if we are talking about the individual, what Mr. President should have done was to ask that man to resign. So that alone would have placated the parties involved. So my friend, you must resign. But he's there. And nothing has happened to him. And he will serve as a standard, just like my group. So in Nigeria, the persons are the strong are, are, are made stronger while the structures are being weakened. It shouldn't be. Well, still looking at the punch now, uh, it talks about our debts and especially with uh, under this administration, Buhari's administration, uh, it's reported <coughs> that the Chinese loan has increased by 209%. I mean, does that really worry you for, you know, a government that came on board and said, hey, we're going to be big on the economy. It's one of the, uh, you know, legs on which they came on board. And looking at the economy, there will be plan to lift away people from poverty of course, apparently diversify the economy. But, but then uh, that's on the, this administration, especially to chi China, uh, it's a 209%. Uh, Messi, you see, I don't know why no science is too penalized. The government is, in fact, uh, it's almost gone. You are talking of a president that is vaccinated. You are talking of leaders. <coughs> Excuse me. Whose lips are dripping with uh, nullification and interposition? They tell you one thing today, they do another thing tomorrow. We are talking of leaders without credibility. But the problem we had was, or we had, not had, because a lot of people are now despondent. The problem we had was having faith in people that have proven to be unfaithful several times. You know, you find out that in the morning they get up. With all high blood pressure, the setting breath, but the name of this. So, if they tell you they are going to leave the economy better than it was, it's a rhetorical question. You all, we are all Nigerians. We all reside in this country. Have they? Of course. Because the answer is a resounding no. That's the 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 breath we are talking about. It's a resounding no. The, in fact, it's worse than it was when they got it. So I don't want to go into the issue of what the president said or what one minister said, especially ministers like Lai Mohammed and Festus uh, Kayamo, and the hubristic character of uh, uh, the minister for labor. I don't want to go into what those persons said because you, anybody who believes them, I mean, I, 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 should go get his head examined for the facility. I, I can't. I can't talk about this government right now. It's, it's, it's already the twilight. It has just about uh, less than two months. In August. 29th of May to be out of office. The body is on the, the success. And sadly, for somebody like me, 
we are in for worse times. Because how do you judge somebody? The person's antecedents, principally the person's antecedents. The matter is in court. So I want to restrain myself. But when you look at the antecedents, and I believe Nigerians know what them from America to governorship of Lagos State. I can Nabo not know his name. Nabo not know his father. Nabo not know uh not uh university certificates are controversial primary school I went to school. I cannot even tell the names of my classmates and my teachers from nursery school to university. <laughs> and I didn't bother to come on air to make clarifications. You, you, I don't know. You don't, you don't know my parents. Yeah, my spirit. Then more so you hear that Obnabo is involved in narcotics or something. And you expect Obnabo to come and give you uh, the dividends of democracy. <laughs> you don't learn how to use uh, the left hand in old age. You don't. So we are waiting, but we are in for worse times. That's the truth. So a, a lot of Nigerians have uh, sunk into the, the slow of this point. Honestly, we should wait. It will be a miracle for the political road of Jericho to be transformed in this country. To be a miracle. Honestly, to be a miracle. To see somebody have joy sins and penitently approach leadership. It will be difficult. So I don't want to bother about the best uh, rates or whatever in this country. I'm not, I'm not, because it is, it is, uh, and it's worse than the animal kingdom. This is not capitalism. In Nigeria, we, it is capitalism for the poor and socialism for the rich. That's what we are practicing. So, I don't have hope. I'm very sorry to say I don't have hope. Especially with the incoming leaders. I want him to prove me wrong. To put me to shame. Yes, it will be a pleasant shame that they perform credit in and Nigerians are. It will be a pleasant shame. Because I honestly doubt that we are going to move, if I will move backwards, once the president elect is sworn in based on his antecedents. And if he has characters like Kofi Kayamo and Lai Mohammed and the uh, arrogant uh, minister for labor, then we are doomed as a country. Um, well, Punabon Katara, just quickly, there's also another that's of big interest There's on the, uh, the Punch newspaper. It talks about the fact that the federal government will in the next one or two weeks, begin the demolition of uh, billions, multi-millionaire private jet hangars that are located at the Murutala Mohammed Highway. The reason for that is that it's actually obstructing efficient use of the airport. Honestly, I'm just hearing this for the first time. Uh, I think the experts are the ones that uh, in a better place to explain this. Because first and foremost, if you talk of destruction, can they be used? It's like um, what they used to call do the plastic industry, waste to wealth or wealth to waste, I don't know what they call it. So the experts will say if those things can be sold as crap to make money for the government. Because when you talk of burning, you should also consider the what it will emit. And we are talking of depletion of ozone layer on a regular basis. We're also talking of uh, the effect it's going to have, you know. We, every day, we are headed close, closely for a rendezvous with death because of what we did. In other states, it's even worse because of the suit. And will that not add to uh, uh, the suit problem over there? Or will it not begin? So the, I think the experts will wait into it if it can be transformed, like we have the plastic they have what they say from waste to well to waste or waste to well. I think that's good. But so if the experts agree that it could be sold as scrap or we can use them for something else, which will be at least to reduce uh, the financial loss. Fine. I think the experts will look into it. And if actually there is nothing to be done, then it has to be done. They have to be done. Rather. 
Mm. Well, at this point, Opunabo, we have to go. Thank you so much for being part of the breakfast. We do appreciate you on Off the Press, and we look forward to sharing your thoughts on more national, uh, very interesting issues right here on the show. Thank you very much, Messi, and good morning, Nigerians. That's the size of Off the Press this morning. We'll take a quick break. When we return, we'll continue with our first conversation. And, uh, we'll be looking at you know the consents that has been raised by Sarah who's asking that the government of uh, Buhari's administration would send the bill to the National Assembly reverting, uh, acting or implementing the judgment of the ECOWAS, who, I mean, the ruling that was given in 2020, July to be precise. When we return, we'll talk some more. Please stay with us. <laughs>